Hi everybody, this is Mitch Tannenbaum. Today I'm going to walk you through adding a user account for entering your SPRS or SPURS score. Remember that anybody that has the 7019, 7020, 7021 DFARS in their contract, you're going to require to enter a SPURS score. And the good news is that at least right now, there is no minimum score, no passing grade, but obviously... You know, the closer you get to 110, the more likely you're going to be looked at favorably. So, first of all, the Spurs database is part of PIEE, or the Procurement Integrated Enterprise Environment. And PIEE is used for all kinds of things. If you're already uh, getting paid directly by the government on some direct pay contract, then you already have a PIEE account, but you might not have a Spurs account. So, I'm going to assume that you don't have either one. If you're halfway through this, and in the sense that you have a PIEE account, but no SPURS account, then all you need to do is add the role for SPRS. So, uh, assuming you, you're starting from scratch, go to PIEE.EB.mil. Now, by the way, I'm going to kind of go through this quickly, but feel free just to pause the video at any point in time, do what you need to do, and then resume the video. So, once you're at the homepage, Click on New User, and you'll see they give you a bunch of, I'm sure, helpful. I'd call it useless information, but these are some of the different systems that are available inside of, of uh, PIEE. So I'm going to click on Register here, and it says, gee, do you understand that uh, you're giving us your data? Obviously, you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be registering. Um, your role is a vendor. Uh, so that's pretty easy. Um, and uh, authentication here. Uh, if you have a CAC card and a CAC card reader, uh, then you could certainly use that. But assuming you don't, then you're just going to put in a user ID and password. Um, and I am going to change this. User IDs must be at least eight characters. Passwords must be at least... You can see the rules over here, right? Passwords at least, at least 15, maximum of 40, uh, one upper, one lower, one number, and one special character. Uh, and then it must be different. In the last 10 passwords, it can only be changed once per day, and the password and the user ID can't be the same, which is like not a big surprise. So at that point, I am going to create a password here. And then you have to enter a CAPTCHA. And the error messages are, are very annoying, but pretty informative. So if you make a mistake, not a big deal. Okay. So then uh, you have uh, three questions, three secret questions. Uh, and I'm going to put the answers in here. Uh, and remember, for secret questions, you know, your um, high school could be located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. They don't care where you went to high school. They just care that you put something in there that they can do a string match on. Uh, last question here. Favorite color? Uh, rainbow. <laughs> you got to have fun with these things. All right. So now, so I mean, I did that right. Oh, didn't like, didn't like uh, my answer there. Let's try this again. This is a real-time demo, so that's why things go wrong. All right, so now you put in information. The fields with a star are required. The rest of the fields are um, not required, so you don't have to put them in if you're lazy like me. Um, you do want to put in a working email because they will communicate with you. And one of the things you need to understand is that um, your password expires every 60 days. Uh, if you don't renew it within 30 days or don't change it after it expires, the account goes bye-bye. So um, it's pretty important to follow that up. And I think even though there's no star next to telephone, I think they got confused between, oh, maybe this is, oh, I see, uh, exclamation 
uh, mark, it says down here, I didn't understand that, uh, in, indicates situational entry. At least one of these two is required. And do I need to put the country code in? I guess not. I don't think so. All right. So apparently that works. None of these fields are required, supervisor. Uh, company information. Notice that after you entered all that, then they came back and put the state field in there. So if you missed that, you'll get an error message that says the state is required. No big deal there. You can also see the role here on the left-hand side. So this is the important thing. So first thing we're going to select is PIEE. -E, and you want to be a contractor administrator. And then you must click the button that says add role. And you'll see yourself down there. And it turns out it does not require any extra uh, information. Then you want to go over here and you want to specify spurs. This is really critical. And you can select both of these roles, add the roles. This does require, it requires a cage code that has a supervisor or administrator associated with it. I think this one does. Let's see if it gives me an error message. I'm pretty sure this is the right one. Nope, it is not. How about... I may have to look up the cage code here. Sorry, guys. Yep, let me look up that cage code. Oh, well. <laughs> Those two don't match, so that's why that's a, that's a problem. Give me one second. Look up the cage code. Uh, okay, 8 PWS 0. 8 PWS 0. Let's see if this works. Please enter a valid group name. Delete that one. And now I'm going to add this one in. It can get PWS zero. I'm not sure how I got the group thing in there before. Group is not should not be required. There we go. It's happy now. So what I did there, I don't know if you noticed, I just deleted it. It was complaining and just re-added it. So these are the three roles you want to have. Please group lookup, group search, well, huh. well, that's kind of interesting. Why is the cage code? I don't understand that. I am going to delete this one and go back here to PIE and try adding it back in again. That's how it worked. It worked for me last time. I don't understand why that's not working. Hmm. Well... I am going to delete that one and continue here. A justification, need to enter SPRS scores. Here's the summary of the information. And I am not going to sign this because I don't want to add this account. But that's the whole thing. So... Uh, with that one error that we got there, which I'm not sure why we got the error, to be honest with you, it may be because that cage code has already been used. That's certainly a possibility. 
Um, that's a possibility. Uh, if you get any kind of error message in it, and this one I'm going to apologize for in advance, my experience with calling the help desk is that they're very effective, but there's a long wait. Uh, customers have told me that sometimes they have to wait for an hour on hold for the help desk. So if you uh, look at, at PIE vendor customer support, which you can just Google, or you can just write down this number that's in here, 866-618-5988, and they will be uh, more than happy to help you with any errors. Uh, I know that, that um, when I originally did this the very first time, uh, there was an issue with my SAM registration, and I will tell you that it may well require that you have a SAM registration. If you, well, of course, if you don't, then you don't have the cage code. The cage code is required, so th those two kind of work hand in hand. And if you have a government contract, you have a cage code because that's required. But um, and if you have a cage code, you have a SAM registration, so you're probably okay. So, key thing there is, do you have a cage code? But if you need any kind of help. Just call the help desk. Uh, they're, you know, normal hours, like actually not bad, 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. to midnight Eastern time, Monday to Friday. So if you're trying this like I do, uh, obviously not on the weekend apparently, but if you do it, at, you know, 8 o'clock at night, which is for me 10 o'clock Eastern time, they're still there. So that's what I can tell you about this. And if you have any questions, give me a holler or call the help desk. Uh, thanks.